So we're going to give an announcement May uh, March 16th. Pogim Fisher's um, funeral, uh, not funeral, but viewing. I burial, sorry, burial. We're going to do that at Kanelia Memorial Park at 11 a.m. on Saturday, March 16th. So if you can, I wish everyone can come because they don't have much family on that side. So you guys should, if can, come. And the one who went to heaven, we should be rejoicing, not sad. Don't wear funeral clothes, like all black. Wear, you know, bright clothes, okay? You know, she was so happy and she was singing, Jesus loves me, do you remember? She was singing, Jesus loves me, and then she even did communion, too. So she's doing that in heaven, too. So what would she want to say to her children? You know, follow me, right? So that's what we do. So what she did, you know, he's going to talk about during the uh, burial service. So to that family line, to her descendants, she opened up the gates of heaven. To connect those to those to those who still remain in this earth, you know what happens when you believe in Jesus Christ. Don't y'all want to live like that too? So through one person, you and your family line and all your descendants can come before Jesus and will know Jesus. So it could be a great blessing. So I bless you guys as well. And then March 31st, there's going to be Easter service. Gen Z youth group will be leading worship. The Gen Z will be leading worship. So you don't have to do anything special. So we just need to lead worship, nothing else. So you're, so that with your heart to praise and worship God, you'll be imparted that. So God will be with you. So let's pray. So Lord Jesus, in this time, everyone is listening to your word. That your spirit especially come so that the eyes to see and ears to hear and the heart to understand so that your life can be changed and be different and the new life will begin in us and we can experience it and every day we can boldly you know, rejoice, have hope, have dreams and boldly you know, fulfill that so let us be that kind of person so I pray in Jesus name, Amen so starting from today, you know, when you believe in Jesus, you don't know who you are very well. So there's many incidents where you cannot use your authority and power. Have you ever thought, oh, I wish I had a little bit more strength, a little bit more power, a little more strength to be able to do this or power to be able to do this? Raise your hand if you ever felt that way. I wish I had more power to do this. So to these people, it didn't work in the way that you tried to do. So to the, the Bible, what Jesus, the areas that they let us know, what the Bible and Jesus let us know, if we follow their way, then there'll be a great change in our life. When we follow the Bible and Jesus' way, so before the foundation of the world, what God planned, you know, Jesus fulfilled it. And he made it so that it's connected in us, so it works in us, and the Holy Spirit helps us so we can work in that plan that God has for us. So if you look in the Lord's Prayer, it says, on earth as it is in heaven. So on earth, right now, so it's present tense. So on earth as it is in heaven. So let whatever is in heaven come down on earth now. Through who? Through who? So why are you so quiet? Through who? If you raise your hand, if you believe it's through me. 
So is what have what is going on in heaven going down through me or is it stuck in me? So be honest, is what's going on in heaven going down through me onto this earth or is it stuck in you? Some people say partially open or no, it's not open. There's those who open the clean out the chimney so that there's the so then they so you know they're covered in the black um like ash the coal you know they're cleaning out the chimney and then it you know the smoke has to go out but it's stuck in the middle so they have to clean it out. So the fire is not going to be strong. So Jesus is the same. So you're stuck too. So in your head, you know, but your heart is not moving. Your head and your heart, is it working together? You know, the distance between your head and your heart is about 30 centimeters. But how long does it take for it to travel from your head to your heart? You know, there's people that didn't even come. It's not even connected yet. There's some people who don't know how to connect it or where to go. So, when you really understand God's word, you have to really understand and learn God's word. It's not you interpret it in your own way or your thoughts, but what did he want us to know? That's why he spoke like that. So we have to understand and when we experience it, from then on our life will change. So just because you memorize with your head, it doesn't change. No matter how much you read your Bible, nothing changes. Just because you write the Bible a lot doesn't mean something's going to change. You have to know what the meaning is of why it's written like that in the Bible, why it's spoken like that. You have to understand the revelation. Only that way it'll work. So what did Jesus tell Peter? So Simon Peter, you did very well. So this is, you didn't know, but the Father God revealed this through you, revealed this to you. And he spoke you know, what he got, he learned through the revelation. That's why he was able to build up the church. Before, you thought you had to pay money and then build it up to make the church, but no, that's not what it is. Okay, let's go one by one. So let's go to Luke 10, from 19 to 20. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So when you read this verse, what do you feel? When you first read this verse, what, what did you feel? You never read it. You know, we read it right now, right? What kind of heart do you have? How do you feel towards this word? Because you don't read it without much thought. That's why it doesn't touch you. So when, let's read it again. Be, all together. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So what kind of thoughts or how do you feel about this word? I say the president of Samsung said, I'm going to give you $100,000 per month. Let's say the president of Samsung is going to give you $100,000 per month. I say he's going to give you $100,000 per month. You, you, you're going to focus on I will give. So you're going to be like, when, how? So right now it says, Behold, I give or take. But why are you not interested in it? He said, I'm going to give you the authority. How come you're not interested in it? So why is your life not changing? You know, even though God says, I give you, you're not interested in it. And just because you say, give me, give me, give me. Think about the father's perspective. He said, I already gave it to you. But your son comes every morning, says, you need to give it to me. Give me, give me. Then how would the father feel? He already gave it to you, but they keep asking. 
My father would say, how dare something like you know, the Father God is merciful, so he doesn't, you know, say something bad about it. But, you know, open it up today. Open up the stuck area. So wake up. So let's read it again. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. There's a reason why it's not coming into you. You're using the plural. You're cal calculating how much of this portion is coming to me. So let's change it again. Behold, I, Jesus, put your name. So Jesus, say your name instead of you. So behold, I give in your name the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Did he say, I'm going to give you if you believe in me later on or he already gave it to you? So check, where is it? Where is it? Where is this authority? Uh, what? So in the Bible, he told us he gave us every spiritual blessing, not every financial blessing. Oh, Song Jun said, where's the money? It doesn't say money. That's why it's not touching. Is God the spirit or the flesh? God is spirit. You know, he said he already gave us every spiritual blessing. So while we're living in our body, you know, he created everything that we need on this earth. You know, it says he gave us every spiritual blessing. So your spirit has to change so that all the material the material things will follow you. But if your spirit doesn't change and in the body you keep saying, give me, give me, then nothing's going to change. Because you're limiting what God can give you. So he said, I gave it to you. But you say, you never got anything. So God says, I've given you many things, not just this. Let's say it again. I... From God, what did you get from God? What has He given you? What have you received from God? Authority and power. So how to know if you have authority or not? How do how do you know if you have authority or not? You have to use it, right? You have to use the authority. Where? Where are you going to use your authority? So he was in the KCIA in the when he was serving in the military. By the grace of God, so his family has a lot of bad backgrounds. So it's hard; for, it would have been hard for him to get in. But by the grace of God, he was able to get into the KCIA. Anyway, they found his name, even though their background wasn't good. So he was able to go into the KCIA, and. He, they give you an ID. Have you watched 007 James Bond? You know, he got that uh, ID. And you know, the ID has a power. Uh, driver license. So he went to something like a driver's license place, place, and then he tried to test out how much power does his ID have. So he brought his ID to the place and showed it that this I am this kind of person showing his ID. Uh, uh, so, 
Basically, the point is he could use his ID as a symbol of authority to open the gate to enter the CIA building. Basically, you know, God gave you the authority, but you don't know you have it, so you've been you're being deceived. <sighs> Surgeon? Private. Surgeon? Private. Yeah, he's private. But because of his ID, he can remove all of the Uh, so. I'm sorry, I am completely lost for the last five minutes. <laughs> anyway, it's a secret place. Uh, <laughs> So usually that's a name, but there's a number that follows it. But they weren't the number, but they had a company name. So when normal people see, they don't know if you're the uh, soldier or not, because it's just a regular company name. So they just say, oh, I'm from this number or base. Like, like his company number, like seven something, something, something. So they said... Oh, he's the private, and he said, bring your captain, and then the captain came running to him, even though Pastor Kim was a private, because of his ID, because of his special ID. So even though he was the private, the captain came running because of his special ID, which is, that means authority. So you have to use authority in the right way. If you use it in the way he used it, that's wrong. But if you know... He wanted to test how much authority he could actually use with that special ID. That was during President Park, the dictator time. He wanted to, so his military regime dictator. So he was wanted to check how much you know authority that special ID had. So he was. So they tortured the students, college students, because they were trying to dictate over everything. Anyway. What did God give you? He gave you authority or power. He gave you authority or power. And power. Read it again. What did what what did God give you? Authority or power? So the, the devil has what? Power. So the devil has power. So what can rule over power? What can overcome power? Is another power or authority? He gave you authority over the power of the enemy. Oh, oh. So, 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 means out from, coming from somewhere, out from. And so, comes from. Amy, so to be. So it's coming from your being. So all authority comes from when you know who you are. It's not from some kind of position or you have some kind of a lot of money. It doesn't come from something like that. You know, the Bible definition and God's definition is the same. Many people think of authority, you have to be in some kind of position. So they bribe and they try to get money and then they try to go up in position to get more authority. But the kingdom of God authority is when you clearly know who you are, who I am, then the authority comes. So if you want to know who I am, who you are, then. You have, you have to agree to God says, you are this person, you are this kind of being. You have to agree to what God says who you are. 
those who are like rejected by authority what the issue is you you don't don't those who don't fully obey your authority that means you don't have authority so authority comes through relationship so know where your names are recorded your names are written in what in the book of life in heaven so your names are written in heaven but if you're living your life in a different way even though your name is written then your name will be erased then the authority is gone so authority is comes from those who obey not because you're older or not just because you study more or not it's because you have a lot of money or not just because your position is higher or, or like captain or even higher than that or ceo doesn't come from that that's not, so your authority doesn't come from your position so let's say the ceo of samsung if he wants to go into the lg company whose permission does he need he needs the permission of the lg the door person gatekeeper in order to go into the company so that's what authority is so authority is not unlimited there is boundary there's a responsible area so authority when you use it there's responsibility so you have the wrong concept of authority is from this world to do whatever you want to to rule and reign and do whatever you want over everyone so that's what people think authority is but the kingdom of god authority is not to destroy others but to save and build them up and you know edify them so as a kingdom of god you know you you learn what he wants to teach you so that you can help others so that they other people can use the same authority to trample on serpents and scorpions so authority is to let them know the same thing not to do what you want to do so many parents you know have a misunderstanding about this they say do this they say do this but you they don't do it so if, if you if you don't obey you don't have authority if you don't obey, so when you obey who guarantees your authority the holy spirit guarantees your authority when you obey so the holy he gave the holy spirit to those who obey so submit to the lord and resist the devil and the devil will run away so if the order changes the devil won't run away so who you are you have to understand the truth and his word and with his word his thoughts and his way you have to agree to those and when you surrender to his thoughts and his ways then the authority will be given to you then you can tell the devil to go away tell the situation or issue to go away then they're just gonna have to leave because the devil knows but many people try to use their power to destroy another power but the devil no matter how much power you have won't move it won't even run away because the devil has power too do you know what the devil doesn't have he was kicked out of the heaven so he doesn't have authority but he stole the authority from who when you don't obey the word of god then the authority he gave you he the devil takes it from you and can torment and destroy the areas that you don't obey using the authority he stole from you so the thief came to steal kill and destroy so the satan came to steal kill and destroy he uses the authority of who he uses the authority of you when you don't obey when you don't know who you are when you live in your own way you gave your authority away to satan when you didn't obey and when you don't know who you are so when you say something there's always some kind of result behind it either you're afraid i want to die and even if i die i'm not going to do it so that's all laws that you make but what is that is that according to god's word or you're going against god's word you're doing what you shouldn't be doing so when you do something you're not supposed to do then there's a record that's there you forgot about it so in the spiritual room there's a record and the devil uses that to steal your authority and then attacks you with that in that area you disobeyed or you don't know so you can easily chase away the devil in those areas you just need to cancel the authority that he stole from you how can you cancel it 
You know, people can't do it. Humans can't do it. Who has to? Who did it? Because I sent Jesus Christ. Every sin that we committed, He buried it on the cross and saved us. And after He resurrected, everything that we got stolen from us, He returned it all back to us, restored it back to us. And all the wrong laws, He destroyed it. And then it has no power over us anymore. He allowed that to us. So to those who believe in that, you know, the authority will be restored to you. So there's always serpents and scorpions, or so if there's no serpents and scorpions, then he wouldn't give you authority. So then the world you live, even if you believe in Jesus Christ, there's always going to be serpents and scorpions around you. Okay. The enemy is always watching over you if you're going the right way or not, and sometimes he comes and triggers you to it makes it seem like oh it's not working. Then you lose focus, right? Or if something comes out from inside of you, you know, so starts something coming in from inside of you, right? Then you get fall into that trap. Have you ever done fishing? You know, because you're going fishing the next day. You know, you put a lot of bait in the water, right? And then all the fish comes, and then you throw in the line, and then they fall for the bait or the trap. So the Satan does the same thing. So in your situation. All of he has the list of all your mistakes you committed and keeps making you try to make the same mistake. So how can you overcome that? So when you know the truth, you can discern all those lies that Satan tries to throw at you. Then you know where you are, what your position is, and when you know the truth, you can easily overcome Satan. So when you clearly know who you are, and when you know who God is, and when you clearly know what He has done for you. No matter how many serpents or scorpions there are, they cannot even come near you. That's what Jesus said. You know, the kings of this world came, but they have no relation to me. Why? Because Jesus has no sin. So do you know what Satan's uh, characteristic is? They they accuse you. The Satan accuses you, lies to you. You did this right. You know God said to do this, but you did this right. Then what kind of heart comes inside of you? You feel guilty, right? When Satan approaches you like that, accuses you like that. No matter how much you confess your sin, and no matter if you got forgiven and you repented, because of that guilty feeling, you perish. You know you forgave. I mean, you repented to God, but why do you still feel guilty? It's because you don't know the truth. Jesus on the cross for you. You don't believe or know what Jesus did for you. You don't know what it means to believe in Jesus. What it means to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That means all the sins that you committed, all your past issues. Jesus Christ on the cross on behalf of you, He paid it all off. Because if you sin, you die, right? So we need someone who died on behalf of us. So who was that? That was Jesus Christ, the one who came as a human being as us. If he was someone else, then he there would be no effect. So the same human being, so it has to be that someone who hasn't committed any sin. So no matter if someone else who committed sin tried to die for you, there wouldn't be any effect. So let's say another person is a robber, came to you and said, "Don't." Let's say a robber comes to you and say, "Don't steal. You shouldn't live your life like that." What would you say? You would laugh, right? The robber comes and tell you that. It's the same thing. If someone who sins comes and says, "I'll die on behalf of you." There's no effect. So even if you do the same thing, you don't believe, and then you try to change those around you, and you try to deal with it with what you know. That's why it doesn't work when you don't do it in your life. You have to believe that you are a spiritual being. He is. Oh, he died on the cross for your sins, on behalf of you for everything that you did. For once for all, he finished everything. So there's no way the devil can accuse you any longer by the blood of Jesus. He already redeemed you. So that's what redemption is. You re- he restored you restored your relationship with him through this redemption. So just because the relationship is restored doesn't mean that you're holy. You might sin again, but you always have a way to return. Why? Because in the name of Je- before the name of Jesus, before His blood, when you confess and ask for forgiveness and repent, then you can be redeemed and go back to Him. 
he gave you the authority to use his name. You got the authority to use the name of Jesus. That is what born again Christian is. So no matter what you do, you have to come to who? If you're wounded or you feel sad, then who do you go to? When you you just go to anyone and you start ranting to them, right? And then you start complaining to them and blaming to them. Then who's going to be happy when you do that? Then Satan will be happy when you do that to others. So who do you have to go to with all your pain and all your wounds when you cry? Who do you have to go to? You have to go to God. But many people end up going to Satan, which is other people. You end up bringing it to other people, complaining to other people rather than God. So God, you have to learn the way. When you made a mistake, and even if you made the same repeated mistake, if you come back before Jesus and you confess and you acknowledge it, and then you cry out and then you repent, and you'll be forgiven. And the law will start to move, the redemption. He already redeemed you. That It'll move. This connection doesn't break. You know, he said, he said, you're the house owner, but you don't clean up. You don't clean up, so who keeps coming? The house owner is not there, so who keeps coming? The gangs, gangsters come. That's Satan. Because you don't clean it up. That's temptation. Because when you believe in the truth, then you have to build up yourself. But you, if you don't build up yourself, that's why they keep attacking you. So it's very easy. Your life isn't complicated. It's very simple to deal with everything. So again, he gave you what? He gave you what? He gave you what? The authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, right? Because you guys are so quiet. Even if he gave you, you don't know how to use it. You don't even think about using it. So if he gave you authority, where, how do you want to use it? Where do you want to use it? I mean, he already gave you the authority, but where would you want to use that authority? How would you want to use it? So what does the Bible say in Matthew 28 and all? So all the authority of heaven and earth has been given to me. So go and make disciples of all nations. In the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you know, baptize them. And then teach them everything that I've taught you. And then look until the end of the days. I will always be with you. Amen. So how to make this authority move? You just have to live according to the way he told you. Then he will always be with you. And when he's always with you, who can touch you? Who can go against you, right? You, let's say you're the king's son. The king is next to you. Who's going to dare touch you? No one can touch you. So Kim Jong-un brings, brings along his daughter. Even the old guys, they're bowing down to the six-year-old, eight-year-old daughter. Even the worldly authorities like that. So God wants to be with you. That's why he's in you. But the problem is, you don't believe in it. The problem is that you don't believe in it. And when you believe in Jesus, you know, the serpents and scorpions will go. Even if you change, the world's not going to change. They're still going to be there. The serpents and scorpions are still going to be there. Because whose responsibility is it to change this world? Who? He gave you this responsibility and authority to you. He gave you the dominion to rule and reign over everything. The problem is he gave you the authority, but you don't rule and reign. So you you get wounded and damaged, but you still complain. Like, oh, maybe God forgot about me. God doesn't love me. So you speak these lies. That's why Satan keeps attacking you. So when you speak the truth, all depression, all diseases, all discouragement, all stress can all be gone in one day. So in Jesus' name, I command everything in my life, all the lies that are in me, in this time, leave right now. Be gone from my life. Break off from my life. I choose to follow the truth. Amen. So in order to use this authority, maintain this authority, as you are written in the book of life, you have to have relationship with God. So let's say you're married, and you did a great ceremony, and then you rented a hotel, and then you did a party, and you did everything. Or how long, after how many days are you bankrupt? Because the relationship isn't good. So marriage is, you're accepting each other. 
when you believe in Jesus, when you accept Jesus, you signed it, right? You signed it after that. You have to believe, present tense. You have to have a relationship. You have to trust in each other. So you have to learn and go even deeper and have more relationship and know what's in his heart, what's deep in his heart. You have to keep seeking him. But you're not interested. You're not, you're not interested in what your husband likes. You're just focused on what you like. Then you're going to destroy your relationship, right? So I said this a lot before. So let's say your direct family likes uh, miso soup, but then your in-laws like kimchi soup. So you made so much food. You made so much of the miso soup because you like it. But would the in-laws compliment you or would they hate not like it because they like kimchi stew? So the problem is because you don't have the knowledge. So follow up to me, knowledge, and you don't have the truth in you. So Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, for my for the, my people are destroyed due to lack of knowledge. They don't even try to know the word of God. They don't even want to hear and learn the word of God. In order to deal with this issue, you know, Jesus saved you, but you don't know how to deal with it after. You don't even try to look in the Bible. You don't even ask him. And you want to try to decide and do everything in your own way. You figure it out on your own way, and then you say, oh, it's not working out, even though you followed your own way. And many people, after they accept Jesus Christ, rather than share your heart with Jesus, you know what they're focused on? They want to borrow Jesus and try to deal with just their issue. And so even if Jesus deals with the issue, where do they go again? They go back to their old habits because they don't have their relationship. So nothing changes. Everything just gets worse. Okay. So before marriage, I met someone who was an alcoholic, addicted to alcohol. He promised. You know, even Pastor Kim, his father was an alcohol addict. So he said, make a contract with me that even when you, after you get married, you will not drink alcohol. So, you know, they made that promise and then, you know, that guy got married. After that, you know, he has to keep it, right? He has to keep that contract. And he has to maintain it, but when he left the B, he went back to the alcohol. Then what would happen? You know, the relationship would be broken, right? So that's what Satan is aiming for. So when you accept Jesus Christ, if you accepted Jesus Christ, you have to listen to the words that Jesus is speaking to you. And if you don't understand it, you have to ask him to know, like, what is this? What does this mean? You have to keep asking when you don't know what to do. You have to ask questions. The reason is you don't do this. That's why you cannot what? see God. So where does the authority come from? Authority comes from relationship. Authority comes from where? Relationship. So obedience without relationship is you're doing it on your own way. You're doing it your own way. And the way that you decide, you're just following your way. And then you say that, yes, I did it. So you have to have obedience in relationship. So you have to know what he wants and then just follow according to that. So rather than knowing what he wants, you do what you decided and then you tell God, oh yeah, I did it. Saul did the same thing. Saul decided in his own way and then said, I did it. And then he did what he to was told not to do and then he said, oh yeah, I obeyed. Would God count that? No. So how can you know the truth? So the truth is not just you read it and it's done. You have to give your heart and ask and seek Him, then the revelation will come. You'll understand it. you understand and The revelation will come. And the ramen, when you keep boiling, you, you know how much water you need to put in. And based on the pot size, you know the water is different. And based on what kind of ramen you put in, the amount of water you have to put in is different, right? So based on which ramen, those who know that the water level, uh, how much water you have to put in is different based on the ramen, they know. That, that means you know how. So this Bible too is you have to know how, not know what. Many people do know what. They memorize the Bible and then they think that they know, but no. They don't know God's heart. They see from far away and they just follow the form. So it's no how. So when you cook ramen from now, now you know. Is it Samyang or is it 
shin ramen, or is it based on what it is? You know, the amount of water is different, right? Based on the ramen or the pot size. Those who cook a lot, they know. For example, you know, ramen, but you have to know how. So if you want to know how, not listening to what is recorded in the Bible, but how to read it, not what to read, but how to read. So Luke 8, 18. So how to listen. <clears throat> so no matter if they say good things, but if your heart is distorted, then you think, oh, they're saying bad things to me. They're trying to give me a hard time. Even though they're speaking the truth to you, you think, oh, they're trying to give me a hard time. So who's the problem? You're the problem, not them. So it's about how you hear, how you listen, not what they said. So Luke 10, 26. Luke 10, 26. Or Luke 8, 18 and Luke 10, 26. So that, you know, if you do it in the wrong way, you might perish. So Luke 10, 26. So what is written in the, not is what is written in the Bible, but how do you read it? Not what is written, but how do you read it? So if your heart is distorted when someone else says, you already calculate, and with your distorted perspective, you sit, respond. So let's say you put a pin on your eye. How much people do you see? Based on the angle, the amount of people you see is different, right? And then you say, that's the fact. Oh, there's that much people, but there's something blocking your eye. So the Bible, the fact isn't important, but the truth is important. What do you emphasize, the fact or the truth? You did this, the fact. You did this. This is the fact. So that's not important, but you have to know the motive of the heart. And even if they did it like this, what does God want you to respond to that? How does God want you to respond to that? So the truth is important. They did a lot of bad things. And you cannot forgive them. When you watch Korean dramas, right? It repeatedly comes up. Even until I die, I'm not going to forgive you. And then many people are saying, oh, I feel so good to hear that. But that's a lie, right? If you don't forgive them until you die, then because of that bitterness, because of that sin, that family is going to perish. So that's what God's truth is. Because if you don't forgive, then you won't be forgiven. If you don't forgive, that poison is going to come inside you. And that poison inside of you is going to go to your next generation. So that they're going to hold on to this hatred, this bitterness. So wherever they go, they're just going to have this bitterness and hatred no matter where they go. So just like Jesus forgave you, if you forgive others, then you'll be free and you can save them too. So it's your choice. So your choice always follows. If you pick the truth, then the life will come. But maybe rather than life, what are they focused on? They're focused on right now money what what do they have right now in front of them the amount of money they have so the god is spirit right genesis chapter 1 verse 1 you know in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth so he created two levels so where do we live we live on the earth so how can we access the one level up? That's why he poured out his spirit in us. So only human being, we have the spirit, soul, and body. So if we want to meet Jesus, how can we meet him? No matter how much you try to do it with your body, it won't work. Or your flesh, it won't work. But you try to heal others with what? You try to do it with flesh way or make them listen to you. No matter how much you do it with your flesh, flesh is flesh. So let's go to John six sixty three. It is a spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to are spirit and they are life. So the flesh profits nothing. So follow after me. The flesh is nothing. No matter how much effort you put in, there's nothing. So if you don't know the truth, then you're going to even have a harder time. All that person is trying to give me a hard time, then your flesh is going to get hard, worse and worse. The flesh, as long as your flesh gets stronger and stronger, then you're going to perish and there's going to be nothing at the end. So what does the Bible say? Without love, without love, and it's nothing. So if you're not connected to Jesus, if you don't abide in his word, then it's nothing. But why do you focus on nothing? 
the, which is the flesh. So those who have the ears to hear will listen. Don't focus on the flesh. The flesh has to die so that your spirit can come to life. The flesh has to die so that your thoughts, your perspective, and it has to be crucified on the cross so that you can know what God wants and you can agree to it. So when you agree to it and you just say yes and amen, then the life will come, the power will come. So the word that I speak to you is spirit and they are life. So whose words? Whose words? So God's words are spirit and life. So the word, so every word, you know that they're speaking to you, but can you see the word? Like that? Can you see the word that's coming out? You cannot see the word, right? You can hear it, but you can't see the word itself. So how can you know it? You know when the word becomes reality. When the word actually happens, then you can know, you can see it. So let there be light. What did God say? Let there be light. He spoke it, but you cannot see the word itself, right? But then what came? The light came. Do you understand? He said, let there be light. You couldn't see the word itself, but you could see that there's light now. So when you speak the words that agree to his spirit, then it'll become reality. So Mark 10, Mark 11, 22 to 24. Mark 11, 22 to 24. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God, for surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. So how can you make the spirit, you know, manifest in the limited physical level? You know, the spirit, in the spiritual realm, there's no time. It's eternal. There's no limit. But the earth, there's a time and there's a limit. There's restrictions on the earth. But when God created human beings, he created us in the spirit, soul, and body. When he poured out the spirit, then the soul came out. So when he breathed life onto the dirt, the spirit, so it's the, the soul is the way to connect the spirit and the, the body. So the soul. So when the soul knows God's will and way and, know, and agrees to God's motive, then the spiritual issues can go down to your flesh. So let's say the electricity is connected, but the middle is not conductive, then it won't go through, right? But then if it isn't, it'll manifest right away. That's why we talked about the transformer last week. So the transformer is what? So your life has to change. Your life has to be transformed to what? When you listen to God's word and you know what his meaning is by revelation, you have to be transformed. So you have to be transformed, but being transformed, there's always some kind of price. It's not you just change. So you say, why can't I change quicker? How long have you lived your life? About 57 years. You're saying change by 57 year, years worth of life in one second. Even if you're in a big 57-story foot apartment, a 57-story apartment, it's going to take time. But you're asking what? What I lived for 57 years, I don't know how it's been twisted and distorted. I don't know how far it's spread out. But you're asking to heal in one second. You know, God can. But how? You're doing it in your thinking. So in order for your thinking to change, there's going to be pain. So when we grow up, there's there's the, the growth pains, right? They suddenly say, oh, my legs are sore. So there's growth pains. And when you're in puberty, then your breast area hurts. Anyway, so when you grow up, there's the growth pains, right? Spiritual issue too. There's going to be growth pains. But when you grow up, but the problem is, if you want to grow up, it changes based on what you eat. What did you eat? What do you eat in the morning? So based on the children's preferences, different. What do you eat in the morning? She eats Korean food. So the flesh, based on what you eat, 
it brings some kind of result. You know, right? That this food brings this kind of result. What about the spirit? Are you starving your spirit? Because you're starving your spirit, you know, the spirit has to have strength to be able to grow up. The spirit has to have strength. So God's power is unlimited. So your spirit has to grow up so that you can be transformed. You know, everything, your spirit has to be transformed so that you can receive all that. But if you don't change anything, if he just touches you, you're going to die. So what has to be changed? Your thoughts have to be changed. And if you want to change, then there's going to be some kind of price. You know, you have to let go of everything that's been twisted and distorted. So raise your hand and you remember all of your past wounds and issues. You cannot forget your past wounds and you still remember it. So those who remember your past wounds very clearly, raise your hand. Or lift it high. Don't look at other people. If you still remember all of any of your past wounds to the clearly, then raise your hand. So you hold on to the past wounds. So let's say that thing is holding on to your past trash. You ask for the new thing. You say, "I'll give it to you." If you pour one thing inside, would you eat it? Right? Would you drink it right away when it's mixed in with all that trash? You know, he wants to give you a new thing, but in your old thing, there's all those dirty things. Would you pour it out in there? Let's say, let me, let me, you're going to say, let me clean this up first, right? Before you pour out a new thing. So as long as your thoughts don't change. So because your spirit's not moving, that's why there's no change. What is the flesh? The flesh, there's no benefit. It cannot change people. You can force them to change, but after a while, they're going to rebel. Based on the situation, they're just going to rebel against. So only by the Spirit can you change people. So Spirit is life, and everything else is no benefit. So God's Word is Spirit and life. So with what faith? So you have to have the faith of God. So have the faith of God. So that means, so God's thoughts, God's ways, you have to make it the same as your way and thoughts. If it's not the same, then there's no point. So if you tell this mountain to be cast into the sea, so the mountain and the sea, so there's a lot of interpretations, but the mountain represent all the hindrances that you cannot deal with in your life, all the physical stuff that you cannot deal with. The sea met Peter on the boat. He said, you know, bring the boat afar, and then they speak there. So if you tell this mountain, all the physical hardships, you have to put it where so that the issues can be solved? You have to put it into the sea, which represents the spiritual realm, so that there's only the spiritual realm can change the physical realm. So you have to put the physical issue into the spiritual realm. But you need a connector to connect the physical and spiritual, which is faith. So faith makes something that you cannot see be seen. So what you can see, there's no point. It's not faith. You know, you see what's going on, but you put your faith in what you see. Faith is in what you can't see. So you know how business works, how to make money, but you use faith on there, so would it work? So you have to move in the spiritual. You need the spiritual faith, not the physical faith. So you say that's faith, but that's not faith. Faith comes from what you cannot see. So faith makes it so that you can see what you cannot see. So you can see the spiritual realm and then you speak it onto this physical realm and make it manifest. That is faith. So faith is the substance of things hoped for and you, what you can't see. So you can see God. You know God. So when you know His will, then you know what God is, what it means about what God is. Yeah. If you know the meaning behind God's word, you know, people say, oh, I see, right? So you fall after me, now I see. When you understand the meaning behind God's word, then you can say, now I see. You cannot see how his word is moving, but when you understand and you obey according to that word, then you can say, oh, that's how it works. Then you can see it. Then you say, oh, now I see. That means, oh, now I understand. So when you un when you speak what you understand, then the power and authority comes, right? When you under when you speak what you finally understood, 
then brings power and authority. That means there's a price. So you have to try to know. You have to keep asking. So when you ask God, you know He's going to teach you. Job chapter 42. So He says, Lord, I was foolish. From now on, I will question you. And you shall answer me. That's what Job said. So until now, I was foolish and I didn't know. But from now on, I'm going to question you and ask you. So Lord, you shall answer me and let me understand and know. So what does God say? So before you only heard with your ear, but now you'll see with your eyes. So it's taste and see, right? It's taste and see. That the Lord is good. So taste His goodness and experience it. And when you experience it, then you'll see the kingdom of God. So your eyes are open. Now you can see, you can understand. You can see the way. You can see how you can live. Or you can see how you perish. So you can see. So now I see. So now I see. So, so what does it say in Habakkuk chapter 2? It says, and watch to see what he will say to me. So you will watch to see what he will say to you. So it's like you're going to see the scene, but how his word, you know, manifest, and how his word is expressed into this world, you'll see and understand. So that's what it means to watch to see what he will say to me. So those who do business, that means their eyes they, they can see, they know the business skill, how to run the business. So when they ask you to fix the AC, you see the AC, you know what the issue is. Then what is that? That is, oh, now I see the issue. I just see the issue. You can just see it and see the issue when you look at it. Did that, were you able to see in just one day? How, long, how many years did it take for you to be able to just look at it and know what the issue is? Ten years. He said ten years. Yeah. The world thing took ten years, but what about the kingdom of God? You only invest one second and you say, oh, give it to me. So that's the issue. So, God, so even if God gives it to you, you don't know it's good, so you just throw it away. So let's say you make a, gave a good gift to someone. But if they threw it in the trash, how would you feel? You spent so much time picking out a gift, but they just threw it in the trash. How would you feel? They give you the Swiss watch, but they use it as a hammer. How would you feel? So when God created you, He created you in, in His form and image. He gave you all this authority and power. He made, But where do you use the... Oh, He made you as a luxury good, but where do you use yourself for? You use it in other things that God hasn't planned you for. That's why he's sad. So come back to Jesus Christ. So come back to Jesus Christ. Don't try to do it with your flesh, but do it with the Spirit. So the flesh is easy because you can see it. But if you do it that way, you're going to perish. So don't do it that way, but how? So in the Spirit, hear what the God is speaking to you and let go of all your own opinions and thoughts. And at least try follow His way at least one time then it'll change. So let go of your ways and follow his ways. You know, try to testify Jesus to others. You'll be able to see that their their eyes change, their life changes, then you know how much power and authority God's Jesus' name is. But without even doing that, would people believe? You know, they're going to just laugh. There's a lot of things, but we literally only did the introduction. <laughs> So Jesus, follow after me, Lord Jesus. I was very ignorant. You said that ignorance is bravery, and I thought I was doing a good job. But in the Bible, not knowing the truth is the way to perish. I didn't even know that was in the Bible. So I humbly go return to you, Lord. So all the issues in my life, 
I looked down on God, I neglected God, and I didn't listen to the word of Jesus in my way, in my perspective, and I did it in the way I wanted to. That's why I ended up living this kind of life. So let, thank you for showing me. So now, before Jesus, I, I honestly acknowledge the life that I've been now, and I confess and I repent. So Father God, your goodness, and with your mercy, and with your grace, and with your favor, pour it out on us. I understand what Jesus Christ did for me on the cross, so let me understand. Let me know who I am, what being I am. Let me recognize and live according to that. So from now on, let my life be completely changed, so please work in me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. That's why the covenant is very important. So we're going to do the communion. So this is not some kind of ritual, but the word that God promised us and His covenant, you understand? So just obey according to His words. So the covenant is this, you know, but He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon Him, and by His stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So you're believing in this truth, and you're receiving it. So, you know, the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he gave him thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. So he purchased us by his blood. So to those who confess this, he's given authority to them. So you have to use this authority. So the things that you don't need, you have to bind it. And what you need, you got to loose it. Everything that Satan has stolen, you have to loose it. And so you can use it in your life, okay? So in the name of Jesus. So all the lies that people have spoken to me, judgment, criticism, ignor ignoring, rejection, fear, Shame, arrogance, rebellion, betrayal, uh, all of that. So in Jesus' name, I bind, I go against all of that. So I, from now on in my life, let it be gone from my life. Let it be gone from my life. And I bind all of that. And in this time, in Jesus' name, I loose every spiritual blessing that God has promised us. The treasures of heaven, the revelation, the word, the power, the wisdom, anointing, gifts, everything, let it be loose to me. So in my relationship, every relationship, let the life be released. Every spiritual blessing, his love, his power and authority, let it be loosed in my life. Let freedom be loosed in my life. Let unity be released. 
and let your glory in my whole family line be released. So in Jesus' name I proclaim, Amen. Okay? So come. So he did this publicly, but you know, personally proclaiming your life now.